हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू वन मोर न्यू वीडियो ऑफ लर्न इट एंड विदाउट वेस्टिंग मोर ऑफ योर टाइम लेट गेट स्टार्टेड सो टुडे विल बी टेकिंग टॉपिक फोर ऑफ चैप्टर टू सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट टू थिंग्स वन इज अबाउट द मेल गेमेटोफाइट एंड द सेकेंड वन इज द फीमेल गेमेटोफाइट विच इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ओव्यूल इन फीमेल एंड द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन्स इन मेल एंड वी हैव ऑल्सो स्टडीड अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ two different male and female sexual parts so now let us talk about the post pollination event what will happen after the pollination has been completed so let us take an example of the first thing like we have the diagram over here in which there are two circular structure on the top of the stigma which is basically the pollen grains from any of the plant it can be a cross fertilization also or cross pollination also and it can be a self pollination also so now what happens in this is it has been divided a female ovule has been divided or a female part has been divided into three parts stigma style and ovary on the top it has a place where all the pollen grains will come in attach so let us start with the topmost section so the pollen grains contains two things or the nucleus of the pollen grains has been divided into two things which we have already studied one is in the vegetative and the second one is known as the generative cells so now whenever the pollen grains come and stick to the stigma they make a small protrusion called as germ tube which emerges from the pollen this germ tube secretes enzymes which digest the tissues on the stigma and of the stigma this germ tube tube then continues to grow as a pollen tube and will directly go into the ovule now what happens to the generative nucleus they give rise to two male nucleus by the division they become surrounded by the cytoplasmic masses and present a distinct male gamete which means both will be an individual male gamete present in the generative nucleus or developed inside the generative nucleus now from the pollen tubes these cells will go through the stigma and passes into the tissues of the style now the entry of pollen tube into the ovule is different types which is depending upon the region of entry into the ovule so it has been divided into three parts one is porogamy second is chalazogamy and third will be known as mesogamy which will be learning in the next topic So now let us talk about the entry of pollen tubes and how it is divided into three parts. The first is known as porogamy. So from the diagram you can easily see the first portion is the porogamy. Now when the entry of pollen tube into the ovule is through the micropylar end, it is known as porogamy. The second is known as the chalazogamy. As the name suggests, it contains chalaza. That's why when the pollen tubes enter through the chalazal end into the ovule, it is known as chalazogamy and the last one is known as mesogamy now what does it means is the entry of pollen tubes into ovule through funicle or the integuments is known as mesogamy but one of the most common entry is through the micropylar end now from that side it enters into the synergids through the filiform apparatus and from the filiform apparatus it guides the entry of the pollen tube inside the ovule so let us talk about the pollen pistil interaction so first thing comes into mind when pollen pistil interaction is there it is about the compatibility now what does the compatibility means is that only the compatible pollens of the same species are able to germinate now this kind of germination is related to the action of proteins which are present over the pollen grains and the stigma that only determines the compatibility if a pollen grain will enter the stigma by some enzymatic activities and then it will goes to the next section which is the style and then to the ovules now many of the different kinds of plant breeders can obtain different kind of hybrid when they manipulate different species by the manipulating their pollination 
For getting different kind of pollen pistil interaction for the plant breeder, there are two kinds or two methods. The one is known as emasculation and the second one is known as bagging. So let us discuss about the first thing which is the emasculation. Now what does it mean is that in female plants which are having bisexual flowers which means they can be pollinized or they can be fertilized with the same plant also and different plant also. So if they don't want to be fertilized with the same plant now what happens in this is in the flower section all the anthers will be removed before from the flower bud before the anther dehiscence or the anther box burst using a pair of forceps it will be cut down and these kind of process is known as emasculation in which the anther of the same plant has been cut out before the anther burst out or dehiscence now the second process is known as bagging now what does bagging means is that the stigma of the emasculated flowers that has to be protected against the contamination by unwanted pollen grains which means they don't want to be pollinized with any of the other pollen grains they are covered with a bag of suitable size to prevent the deposition of unwanted pollen grains from any of the other plant and this bag is generally made up of butter paper and this whole process is known as bagging and it is a technique for the plant breeders to manipulate the different kinds of pollinating processes. So now let us discuss one of the most important topic of this chapter which is known as the double fertilization but before moving forward let us discuss what is the basic meaning of fertilization. Now it is defined as the process of fusion of two things one is male gamete and the second one is the female gamete and the ultimate product or is formed is known as zygote. This zygote will eventually develop into an embryo and then embryo will develop into an fruit. So this is the basic process of fertilization. So now let us move forward and understand the two things. We have already studied how the ovule or how the pollen grains enter into the ovule. It is of three types. One is porogamy, the second is chelozogamy and third one is known as the mesogamy. The most common technique is of a porogamy. So now let us understand that whenever the tube or the pollen tube releases every time the two male gametes into the embryo sac. The one gamete fuses with the egg inside the ovule and form the diploid zygote which is known as syngamy and this syngamy is also known as generative fertilization. Now what happens to the second gamete? The second male gamete goes and fuses with the two polar nuclei present in the center of the ovule. This will produce a triple or a triploid primary endosperm or a nucleus. This is called as a triple fusion and this kind of fusion is also known as vegetative fertilization. So two kind of fertilization happens inside. One is generative fertilization in which, in which one male gamete goes and fuses with the egg which is known as generative and second one is known as vegetative fertilization in which the two nucleus or the two polar nuclei fertilizes with the one of the male gametes which is known as vegetative fertilization. So when these two kind of fertilization, one is syngamy and the second one is known as triple double triple fusion, the one is known as generative fertilization and second one is known as vegetative fertilization occurs inside an ovule. That's why it is called as double fertilization because there are two kinds of fertilization by the pollen grains of the flower. So now let us discuss what is the final fate of syngamy and triple fusion. What will happen after the syngamy process and what it will develop into and what happens to the triple fusion and in what product it will develop into. So let us start with the first thing which is the pollen tubes into the cyanogids. Now what happens in this is that the pollen tube releases two male gametes into the cytoplasm of the cyanogids. Now the first process happens which is known as the syngamy in which the pollen tube releases two male gametes into the cytoplasm of the cyanogids. One goes and attach with the egg and form the zygote so for the first formation it is known as diploid zygote formation in which the zygote is developed and it will develop ultimately into an embryo so the final product of syngamy is embryo now what happens to the second one which means what happens into the triple fusion or when the three haploid nucleus fuses one male gamete move towards the polar nuclei which is located in the center and fuses with them and produce a triploid PEN which is known as primary endosperm cell. Now what happens to this is it develops into an endosperm which will nourish all the things or the embryo present in the double fertilization. So the 
process of syngamy is final result is the formation of embryo and the final result of which is known as triple fusion is that it develops ultimately into an endosperm which will nourish the product of syngamy which is known as embryo so now let us discuss about the post fertilization event or what the structures and events will take place after the fertilization process has been completed the first thing is endosperm so we already know that there are two processes one is generative fertilization and second one is vegetative fertilization in generative fertilization it is known as syngamy and in vegetative fertilization it is known as triple fusion and we have already discussed that the ultimate fate of triple fusion is the formation of endosperm so let us discuss what is endosperm it is a nutritive tissues formed with the help of vegetative fertilization which is known as triple fusion and it is finally meant for the nourishment of the embryo present inside the cell now basically endosperm is made up of triploid cells and this triploid cell is known as primary endospermic cell which is known as pec now this endosperm has been classified into three categories the one is nuclear endosperm the second is cellular endosperm and third is halobial endosperm so now let us discuss about the functions of the endosperm what is the basic function of the endosperm the first is in plants with albuminous seeds now what does the albuminous seed means the seed which store food material in, in endosperm are called as albuminous seeds which helps the endosperm for the early seed growth so the endosperm help the plants with albuminous seeds for the early seed growth the second the basic product or the basic work of this endosperm is to provide the nutrition to developing embryo whatever the embryo has been developing inside the fruit next is the liquid endosperm of coconut contains auxins cytokinins and gibberellic acid which and induces cytokinesis which added to the basic nutrient medium the coconut milk can also be used to induce the different embryo and plantlets from various plant tissues the last point is zeatin which is present and very potent cytokinin is extracted from the young endosperm of maize so these are some of the functions of the endosperm i hope you might have understood these topics very well if not i urge all of you to again repeat the video and watch it again you can also note this topic down as your notes so that you don't have to refer the books we at learn it are working hard to bring you all the easy and simple learning materials which can enhance your learning and listening capabilities if you are finding hard to understand any of the topic or want to know something in detail you can comment your questions down below in the comment section if you like our work please give it a thumbs up and if you want to get updated of our new videos do subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any updates from the channel for more of such kind of updates stay tuned to the channel stay healthy stay safe and fit bye bye